Okay. So welcome, Peter Peterson III, to the show. Thanks, man. <laughs> Cool, cool. Use the whole stairs thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you used to use the step. You just, know? just one step. Florida, oh, yeah. Florida. Mostly Florida people do that. <laughs> um, so anyway, welcome and thank you so much uh, for coming out here. And so let's, uh, I kind of want to dive into this a little bit. Pete Peterson, okay? Yeah. That's a heck of a name. In fact, it's one that stands out. Like, uh, I, I, I've met people. Has it helped you in your career, having just a really uh, amazing, yeah. redundant name? Yeah, it was really, really bad when I was a kid because it was like, oh, no, you have Pete Peterson. You'll learn one thing. I'm like super hyper. Um, so it was really bad then, but now it's like if I meet someone, instantly they remember my name. So it's always kind of a, a quick icebreaker. That's uh, awesome. You're Peter Peterson. Cool. I know another guy named Jeff Jeffries, which I always thought that was that was the best one. Peter Peterson's the best one. Cool. So it's a third, though. The third, yep. Okay, so. so my dad and then me and then my grandfather. So. And then you're going to pass that along yeah. at some point. Okay, great. So PP over here not is... Not um, long, actually. We decided not to. I have, was, two, I have two boys, and we're having a little girl actually next week. So um, it's kind of crazy. Congratulations. So that's it, man. and then I'm done. Congratulations, yeah. right? Hey. Love it. All the parents are like, yeah, okay, great. Get into <laughs> your content. <laughs> yeah, get into your content. Okay. Oh, man. Um, so Last to, for our trip. <laughs> yeah, so this is the reason why P is here. I, I'm actually... The, the one thing I'm really excited about is that you've done uh, a few things... With our, so you, when did you become a partner? How, how long ago was it? Oh, over a year. Over uh, a year? When was traffic, not this traffic conversion, the one before 18, that. Yeah, yeah, in February of 2018? Yep. Yeah, yeah, so it's been 17. a while. So you've been, exactly, that's what I said, 17. <laughs> I don't know why you're saying that. 16. 2017 is when you've been a part of the program. Tell us a little bit about like what your company is. Give us a little bit of description of like, what, what your specialty is for, for your business. Yeah, so the name of the company is Dealers United. We're in the auto space, so um, we actually have about 6,500 auto dealers in the U.S. and Canada that we work with. Um, and over the past four or five years, our business model has completely changed from what we started out doing in the industry to what we are today. Um, so we'll get a little bit into that on niching down. But, um, but yeah, we're, we really focus on the franchise dealer market in the U.S. and Canada. Um, and uh, we just love it because it's a, it's a great space and there's a lot of transitioning happening, obviously. How many people know Tesla in here? and uh, those types of companies, right? Changing the way the game is. If you've seen like Carvana's of the world coming up now with online. So the, the whole market is shifting and uh, it's a pretty old school market. So it, there's a lot of room for disruption right now. Um, and we're just happy to be part of it. Okay, so tell me about this. So I know that for sure the auto industry is archaic and also they don't trust you. They have really bad reputations, yep. right? So every time I go to a parking lot, even if I was at a Tesla, store in a mall somewhere because it's not a dealership anymore um i always feel like people are trying to screw me so do you do you feel like the majority of when you're talking to these these owners of these companies is it overcoming that stigma for people that's a big yeah it's a big one a how big do you one. how do you do that like what is the big like what's been the big change of helping people to not feel like they're getting taken taken for a ride <laughs> from a consumer standpoint yes, yes um yes. so a, a lot of it's just you know Everybody has access to more information nowadays, so a consumer is literally going to pass through 60 sites along the way to buy their, their, their car. Um, so we call it the BS meter, right? And we teach the dealers that these consumers are going to come in trying to figure out what the towing capacity of an F-150 is just so they can play stump the operator when they get in. Because the first thing we're going to be able to do when we get in the, in the dealership is we're going to ask a question to the, to the sales rep to see if they're lying to us, right? Because that's the only thing we're going to try to figure out. Are they, right away, the process starts there. So it comes down to we're seeing heavy transitioning to training inside the dealerships. Um, and, and they're trying to reorg as well. I mean, the, uh, the dealer model doesn't have a lot of educated um, salespeople there, right? So four-year grads and things like that is not in that market. It's not a sexy market. So we're trying to really position in the colleges too that to have a really successful sales career, you can take auto as a way, and we have to change it over time yeah. um, um, through there, but you know, access to information. And what we do online is, is heavily helping the consumer um, purchase in store as well because of, of what we're able to do in our advertising structures. So for people that uh, also maybe deal with, you know, kind of that same, I mean, not everybody here is dealing with dealerships, right? But I feel like a lot of people here might be dealing with maybe some archaic old industries. How are you bringing those industries forward? Because being an agency trying to go talk to these people alone yeah. must be a nightmare, right? So how do you navigate an, an archaic system like that? And how did you get into this? Like, how did that even start? Yeah, so um, the big thing I'm gonna tell you that you wanna do is, is elevate your status, right? Um, my last uh, uh, company I worked for, 
I worked for a company called LexJet. We were in the paper business. You probably never even heard about us, um, but we became one of the largest paper companies out there, and we actually acquired over $100 million of HP business by taking over their whole division. We took over Kodak's division. We were the global brand source for them, so I learned a ton about that. And in that, that industry, we were taking people from the dark room on photography and moving them to digital printing. And we're seeing that right now in, in auto. What we're doing is we're taking people from tr tr traditional advertising to digital, and that's really why we repivoted to where we are now. Um, but uh, it, it, is, it is very you know, archaic as whole, but um, <laughs> I think you're, you're going to start seeing that digital is going to outdo it. But we really consider ourselves like business process optimization experts at this point. It's not, we're not digital marketers. Let's face it, guys. We are not in there to, be, to help them get more leads and more sales and all of that stuff. We are literally changing the way these dealers operate by helping them understand transparency online, what a review means to them, why it's important to treat their customers right because they're going to leave a little cookie trail back online on what their experience was. So the next buyer that comes into market is going to see that and pick that trail up. Huh. Um, how social is really interacting. With, um, with their consumers locally. How many of you work with local businesses um, as a whole? Local businesses? How many brick and mortar local businesses like a, like a chiropractor or doctor office? Or, so there's another challenge that you're going from online to offline, right? And then in our, gener in our industry, we have a generational gap. We have a lot of older dealers. So they're not on Facebook. And so to get them to buy into Facebook um, is it, tough sometimes. But then I think our you, senators made that very clear. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, then, but, but I'll also you know, add to that. I teach a, a course at University of South Florida as well in digital marketing. And most of the students don't even know about how remarketing works and, and some of that. So I won't, I won't play that card um, on that <laughs> side did. of it. But, yeah. um, but there's, a, there's a ton of room for education, guys. That's one of the biggest things that you can never underestimate that you are literally an expert right now, even though you probably don't feel like an expert sometimes because things are changing so fast. You read the, the chapter ahead of them right now, so you're smarter than they are because they haven't read your chapter yet. So just be one chapter ahead of them and help bring them forward. But when I talk about elevating status, one of the big things we did a few years ago we were looking around the industry and figuring out, everybody was on Google, everybody had that part pretty much nailed out, you know? Um, but this whole opportunity with Facebook was coming and no one realized that the Facebook uh, system had changed. Everybody, there used to be an organic page, right? You'd go to a page, you'd set it up and you'd try to get followers on there and then you'd post stuff and Facebook would actually show your message to people. That doesn't happen anymore. The organic reach is dead and especially around an auto dealer. The only time you'd actually wanna follow an auto dealer is when you're maybe buying a car, but even then, you don't really want to follow an auto dealer. So we have to use the ad system, and one of the things we used to do is we'd go in the industry and vet products and services and help dealers understand which products is products to use, how much they should spend on them, and then kind of help them with their marketing mix. <clears throat> and when we tried to find a Facebook partner that was out there doing it, no one, was, no one transitioned because they were making a ton of money managing pages, so they weren't focused on the dealer. And uh, so what we did is we actually flew out to Austin, Texas here. There was one guy running the autos team in Facebook. That was it, just one single person for all of Facebook running the entire side. Nice. So we wanted to elevate our status with them. So we went and started having meetings with them. And we found out that no one in the industry wanted to do Facebook ads because it was too difficult. It was too time consuming. They, their book of business was over here and they felt it would, it, would, um, it would take away from that. And we came in with no expectations of just how can we help, right? So Facebook has literally walked us into so many opportunities and I mean, when you have them on your side, it's pretty awesome. And we became one of their fastest growing and now we're, we're the largest partner in the automotive sector um, in ad spend, which is kind of crazy because we were never even an agency just a year and a half ago. Um, so it's kind of crazy. So we'll talk a little bit about that. My mind's blown on one thing that you said and I never really put this together. I don't know why, maybe I'm just super slow, but um, how many people talk to currently people that you have to educate your potential client? you're educating them on the importance of what you can bring to the table, right? It seems like something that seems like everyone in here knows that but me, but I love, like tell me how you, how have you done that? Now, this isn't just a pitch for what we yeah. do here, but tell me how you've educated and how have you successfully educated that market um, to, to understand and create that need? Yeah, so it started with our team actually. We had to educate our team before we could educate the market. So I was pretty lucky because I've been working in digital for a long time. I built e-commerce platforms platforms for companies like Hewlett Packard and I drove traffic from Amazon and I knew Marketplace and I've been doing this for a long time, right? Um, and uh, but we have a young team. We're very millennial driven and they need to be educated. So the first thing we kind of started with was, you know, we have to understand the market we're serving. So we have to niche down. We really have to do that. And, uh, and then even inside the market, when we niche down, we really had to understand who are we serving and who are we not serving. I think that was the biggest thing that you have to understand is who are you not going to work with? 
And you have to be pretty clear about that. For us, I'll tell you straight out, we don't work with publicly traded mega groups, we call them. So if you're an auto nation store or a Sonic or a Penske and you have hundreds and hundreds of stores, we won't work with you. We won't even take your call. And that's tough. Like, who wouldn't want a call, right? I know someone just said they got a call by Walmart. I mean, that's an awesome call to get. But what we realized is they already had the tools in place and they already had a CMO. They already had a CIO. They already had a CTO. They could afford that. What, who, did, who couldn't afford that was a small mom and pop shop that was going out of business in every single local community. And we started researching the industry and understanding that they employ 65 dealers at $60,000 $60, a year in salary. So you think about the local economic impact that's there. So we made our mission to make sure we no, no other dealer would go out of business that was in that, that, kind of, wow. uh, that kind of market. And we try to help educate dealers on how not to go out of business. Um, but we had to educate our team on the industry, right? So we had to understand the industry. I wasn't from auto. But I kind of like it, you know. I've always been around cars. I'm not like a, a gearhead or anything. So I had to ed educate myself first and foremost by flying around the dealers, sitting and working with them behind the scenes, watching them, you know, work with customers, experiencing their pain points, asking them hard questions, and then educating our team specifically. Can I, can I, can I pause yeah. right there? Uh, one thing that you just said is is um, indicative of success, and one thing is like you s slowed down to learn the industry. Like you sat there unpaid just watching them do their job. Yep. That, that blows my mind. Like if you, wanna, if you ever sit down with successful people and you do these interviews, I do a lot of these interviews, I, I, I keep seeing this trend. Like they, they, they were unbelievably curious and they would just go do that to learn so that they could, before they ever jumped in. A lot of people just jump in. Yeah. So I, I really admire that. I want to make a point of it because anybody watching this or if you're just listening to this right here, um, a lot of you are sitting here trying to figure out your industry. And you're you, you, you ask each other questions all the time about, like, how do I infiltrate this industry? How do I educate people? How do I educate my team? Like, when's the last time you went and sat there and, and sat in the same shoes as your prospect without getting paid for your time, but yeah. just absolutely doing kind of, like, research, yeah. right? I, I think that's fantastic. So keep going. And when that, you boil it down, you'll learn, like, what their real problems are so you can actually help them, right? Because if you could build solutions, then you're fine. But we start with a, with a square peg, right? We're like, oh, we have this product. We have this service. We're great at Facebook. Everybody should do Facebook. Right? But you don't understand their actual business problem and how Facebook can solve their business problem. And that's what you have to connect on the two. And um, I think, I don't know if Russell Brunson came up with this from the ClickFunnels side, but he's always like, you know, find a hot market, right? Ask them what they want and then give it to them. But that's the big thing is like literally we knew that there was a hot market in auto because it's a big market that's there. We just had to ask them like literally what are your pain points and now we're working on giving them and solving those problems because they don't have that ability. So again, yeah, we, we, we started by really um, looking at the educational side and we didn't want to go down the typical path of what every other agency was doing in our space which is you know just becoming an auto agency that was focused on how they made profits and how what we call the OEM makes profits, so how Ford makes profits. We had to worry about the dealer, right? We're not here to serve Ford.com Ford or you know, AstonMartin.com. We're here to serve the local dealer in every community. It's a different audience, right? Think about it, a car manufacturer doesn't sell a single car. They make cars and they report to Wall Street, right? The dealer actually sells the car, so you have to understand their needs and their problems that they're going through. And a lot of it, they're a typical small business, which is cash flow, cash flow, cash flow. Employees, right, is another huge thing that we learned along the way, is that they had more employee issues. They needed salespeople and service techs. And again, you're dealing with two a really unsexy industries. So even though you can make $150,000 being a sales rep at a, at a car dealership, no one wants to go into it because it's, it's, you, you feel like you're a slimy uh, sales rep, right? No one wants to go and turn a wrench anymore, even though a diesel tech will make $110,000 if you're a level four diesel tech for Ford. That's a, that's a great career mm -hmm. for someone, right? And we're having skill gaps right now because everybody's going to college. So I think this industry, right, you probably are hacking your education right now and that's what I consider like myself to do I've I didn't follow a traditional path I hacked my education together and it's going in immersing yourself about an industry about a topic learning 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 and then giving back you got to give back um, and we'll, we'll kind of go into like getting finding your voice and getting out there and becoming an industry expert it's really easy to break into an industry and just show up at the events and start talking to people and then speaking there and then just be known as like a leader in that space no one outside of there knows who I am it's kind of funny if you talk to Ryan right if you're not in his little community here like you ask most people you ever hear Ryan Dice or like who you ever hear Russell Brunson who but probably most of you guys know click funnels and you know Ryan Dice and it, but that's because we're in the community, right? Yep. So you have to understand that's happening in your community right now that you're building. But if you're trying to be the everything store to everybody, especially as a small startup or, or agency, you're going to fail pretty fast. So one thing he said that was really incredible um, that I want to pay attention to is 
we, we aren't in that kind of traditional education space anymore. In fact, I didn't think we were in it when I went to college. Like, anybody else have student loans in here? Oh, yeah. Maybe a couple people, nobody else? <laughs> great, yeah, great. Just me? Okay, cool, this is, I'm sweating now. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. Um, so I, I went through the route of going through the traditional education system, and it was very experiential. Yeah. Like, I don't know what I learned there that I would necessarily attribute to what I'm doing right now, especially I've been a sales guy for like 15 years. <laughs> so one of the things that I always remember is my degrees in psychology, awesome, um, or it could have been mass comm or anything else to get me through college. But college always was traditionally this place that you went to because you couldn't get the information otherwise. Like when colleges started, it was like, here are a bunch of smart people with really good information. Go to them because that's how you're going to get the information. Now it's like you want to learn something, you go online and you learn it, right? And now the expectation and the onus is on the business to be able to bring in someone who's junior and educate them along the way and, and up-level that, yeah. right? Yeah, well, let me, let me tell you, what we're, so in Florida, one of the best things that's ever happened to our community in general, uh, like the Sarasota area or Florida in general, is our governor, um, does people know how like universities are funded a lot of times? Like they're, they're kind of funded by the state in, in many ways, right? So the Florida universities used to be funded by how entry would happen, so how many students were enrolling there. And when Governor Rick Scott came in, he said, no, we're gonna focus it on jobs. So you gotta place these students. So they either gotta go to a job in Florida or they have to go to a five year, to a master's program, right? So for me, I'm freaking out as a business owner going, that's great, it's aligning with us, but I'm also going, well, college is just gonna sell more college because they, they have the student and they're not, you know, so we have to, as business owners, get inside these colleges now and start helping them to develop curriculum. So we, when we, this is why we started partnering with Digital Marketer. We actually teach a lot of the Digital Marketer CBO and Facebook stuff, and I got five other local experts to go in and help me teach a class at University of South Florida for digital marketing. They didn't have experts on it and try to find how to, you know, a university accredited college professor right now in this, it doesn't really exist out there. So they didn't know how to build content. So we just took the book for dummies. I'm like, let's just use this as our starting <laughs> ground, right? Like, so we just hacked things together again. And the students, we had like 18 the first year. This year we had 30 in there. We just hired one out of the class. We're beating, building feeder systems from it. And then what's cool is they're kind of on board for it already. And then we also, on our employee side, we actually use the entire HQ platform to, we don't use it to sell our clients right now. We're not, we're not quite there. We're excited about what's coming with, with allowing us to put content inside the platform and Ryan will get in that later but we use it to help our to help bring in uh, new junior um, uh, um, team members and then skill them up so they actually they can earn up to nine thousand extra dollars a year by going through the accreditations on digital marketer and also Facebook blueprint and also uh, Google uh, Ad AdWords and analytics so we put a value on what each one of those would be so every class that's in HQ is worth five hundred dollars of a raise to them so think about it, it's $375 to a, a person that's coming out of college. That's a car, really, really nice car payment that they can make just by literally getting more education. They've been getting educated and they paid someone to get educated. So I want to I want to make sure they're educated for what we're doing. So obviously we have t we have the the digital marketing side, and then we also have the auto side that you'll you'll normally go through. We, as well. Can we take a time out first because I know like I see my team in the back, their eyes just got big. Um, so uh, maybe it's something we should be doing. I don't know yet. Uh, uh, but yeah. So I, there's there's two things you said. One was everybody in here is going like, oh my gosh, that's awesome. You're teaching at a university. You've got other people doing that. First of all, that sounds hard. That sounds incredibly difficult to get into a university, so I want to ask that question. And the second one was, I love that you use our certifications as a way to up-level and train your team and the more junior people who are coming in. I know that the majority of our, our team that comes into Digital Marketer is required to take our certifications, obviously, right? That's yep. what they're talking about. But it's also a great way to up-level junior people who don't have the skill set uh, per se. And there are people on our sales team right now that can build funnels, and there are people that, and it's an unbelievable way that you can start to see that, that work. So tell me why, I mean, why the money part? Because, I mean, you're right, people have been paying for education for a really long time. Have you found that there are people that are more um, ingrained, they want to stay in the company because you're investing more in their education? Yeah, I think so. I mean, we have some in, our, in the audience here that are, that are going through it. But for me, we bring people in at a lower base salary. Let's just face it. I'm not going to go. I'm a type of person that you got to earn your way up. And, and uh, I'm not going to bring someone in and say, I could do, I could do. And they really, half the time, can't even use Google AdWords, or I'm sorry, Google uh, Apps, right? And like just for basic communication. So for me, I have to train you on how to be an employee normally if you're coming out of college. Yep. So I'm not going to pay for that. I'm not going to offer you 40 out of the gate. I might offer you 30. And I'm going to use a, a way to get you to 40 by showing that you can stage gate it. Plus, it gets me, it has a, an onboarding um, training platform. So 
that's pretty awesome to have it, to tell an employee like I have training for you. You're not alone. Like we're going to put you through something. Also, in in Sarasota, we can get credits from the local uh, job market that's there. So they'll I think they'll pay up to fifteen hundred dollars per employee for us because we have a formal education onboarding program in there. We have to like work with them and show them that. So your, your local areas probably have incentives to help do that for you as well. We haven't really taken advantage of it because all the paperwork and stuff and all the hoops, I don't want to make our employees go through it, so we just opted not to do it. But there is that type of thing that's there as well. Um, but then the other side, and, and you know, just to yeah. kind of flip through the, I'm going to go past this for a second, and she's going to hate me on this, but Caitlin's in the audience here. She's fully certified on digital marketer, so that's awesome. Like we rebadge this whole thing, and that sits underneath all of her emails that go out to our clients. So now our clients know too that you know they're typically seeing the same. Hey, I'm AdWords certified. We're a premier partner in Google because in our space, everybody's a premier partner, right? There's no differentiation. No one puts this on the bottom of their signature. No one and and I hate to like open up this to the partner network out there, and I'm sure we're going to drive autos in here now because everybody's going to want to badge up for digital marketer. We're the only one in auto, like truly in auto. I know there's a couple guys like Rico that's out there. Hey, Rico, you know you've been doing a great job training, but like we're the we're the only bigger agency now that is like skilled up this way. And how many times do people reply back like, oh, I took a class from digital marketer. Oh, and like the guys that are starting to get it and train inside the dealerships, they're relating with this, and we eventually want to turn this so we can we can say, hey, you want to get trained, you want to train your staff on. This here's how you do it, and with the new platform, we at least we'll be able to do it. But it's it's it it just allows us to have that differentiator as well that not everybody's badged up on, and I would really use that to your advantage. And two, this makes our employees kind of look at it and be like, well, Caitlin's badged up. Can I, you know, it pushes them as well yeah. to uh, to try to do it. And I'm a big fan of an educated employee because yeah. that's a better employee for me. Yeah, I kind of want to make sure to say badged up now because that is the coolest yeah. thing I've heard for no. a while. And my my teams are still looking at me like, yes, maybe we'll talk about it. All right, I don't know. <laughs> Oh, hold on. Um, so let's go back to the education part. Yeah. So why? I know there are a lot of people in here that are great trainers and educators and coaches, and they they you know everybody knows this stuff. So what's the importance of how did you get into, you know, this university? I mean, I've I've heard a couple. So, of, I heard a couple of the benefits. Yeah, too, yeah. But tell me how that. So even my my story is a little weird. I'm not going to bore you with the whole backstory, but I didn't graduate college when I was young. I started my first business at 21 and sold it and went into another company and kind of went from there. And when I was in my 30s, I was sitting around a board table with all these executives on a leadership bench with Hewlett Packard and Kodak, and everybody's like MBA, four-year grad, and I'm sitting there like I got a two-year degree from a county college of Morris and some tech credits and certification. I'm like, I should probably go back to school. <laughs> so I went to University of South Florida in my 30s when, you know, don't do this. This is not good advice. Don't do it when you're having your first kid and you just became a CEO of a company and it's just not the right time. But push through it, became that. Well, I became really good friends with the dean of the business school because I was older. So I was like the old guy in all the classes. And uh, we just started forming a relationship on there. And I kept, you know, saying, hey, you know, I need employees while we're building this company and I'm seeing things that aren't matching up in the university and they were pretty open to that. And then again, the, the perfect storm happened when, when the government shifted the way they needed funded. So now he needed me, right? So you gotta figure out like when, when tides are turning, listen to what's going on in your local markets. How can you help give back? Um, you know, I also teach at the Boys and Girls Club for the Entrepreneur Center that's there. So you find through there because a lot of people in that community will get connected there. And then that gives us a great way to give back to the community as well. So it doesn't have to be a university, a formal university. Mm -hmm. These co-work spaces, they need lunch and learn sessions. There's tons of co-work spaces coming up right now. You could find a way to break into that. Um, like I'm part of a CEO forum too. So if you're into that and you're selling, you want to be part of something, join a CEO forum because now you have like all the local businesses be part of your community and and I'm telling you it'll change a lot of stuff up but um, you just got to push you got to push reverse engineer what you want to have happen and just go make it happen it's pretty simple <laughs> so simple um, so yeah no uh, one thing one thing I'm already blown away by and I knew that this conversation was gonna happen um, is just that you didn't go to school and that you were sitting in these boardrooms you felt like you need to go back but looking at it now you have a tremendous amount of information and just knowledge that people don't have because most people's most people that are coming out of business school that haven't actually done what you did it's hyper theoretical oh, right yeah. and I've talked to people that have MBAs that are just like the most educated unsuccessful people I've ever met in my life right um, and I think so I don't think that's the X factor there so give me this as we segue into your show and tell where I do want you to go into this what what has been and I ask this to everybody who comes to the show what's the what's the reason you're successful because I know you have a way bigger than seven-figure agency what what is what was that thing that was kind of like the driving force what, what tipped over to be success 
I mean, I think it starts with you, and you have to you have to be you have to know who you are, and you have to be passionate about what you're working on. I think most people just find something that they can go make money in, and they're miserable doing it. I think if until you're happy and you're passionate about what you're actually working on, you're never going to attract the right customers. You're never going to attract the right employees. You're never going to attract the right community relationships. I think that's the first thing. I, we actually, again, we pivoted multiple times, and I was pretty miserable. I was tra chasing money for a while and doing this and doing that. And luckily, we had like kind of a major event happen where we had to discontinue some partnerships that were like really, really bad. And I was in a bad spot. Like I will tell you straight out, I went from like a really bad spot. But then I sat back and I literally took a deep breath and I said, "Go back to basics." Think about this. Let's reverse engineer where we're trying to go. If we want to create a $10 million, $20 million, $100 million agency, how would we get there? What are the steps? What do the packages look like? And I just thought on paper and I just started looking at things and, and figuring out where was the market and studying it again and just and planning it out. And then once you kind of have that, that vision for yourself again, when you have it, you can lead others towards it. And then it's about communication, execution, and leading by example in a lot of ways. I, I show up every day with our employees. I push. I try to you know get up and get to work on the same time as everybody and work through that stuff. I think a lot of those little things just add up to the bigger sum. There's no one, there's no one magic pill I say that you can ever do it, but I think it starts with you and your passion that you can find within yourself on whatever it is you're doing. Because I tell people I've never worked a day in my life, not one day. If I did, I'd quit. Like that, whatever I was doing on that. And when I when I am unhappy, I pivot a little bit. I figure out how to get in there into where I, where my groove is, and I find where my skills are, and then I build teams around me. That I have way smarter people around me than than I am. Like literally, we would never be where I am. I'm here right now, and our our business is humming right now. Even we got our two we got two of our main Facebook people here right now, and our entire Facebook agency is running without a, a hiccup right now because we got the right processes in place at this point, and it just runs like a machine, and we're we're scaling up every single day because we have all the right teams and the right people that are starting to happen and it, it was we went through stage gates and I'm sure you're like oh that's great you have like a bunch of people now and you know we don't we're only a one person agency so were we at one point you know I literally was doing the books I was making the phone calls I was doing all that but it started because I understood my customer and I was passionate about helping them meet their business goals which would ultimately help me make my business goals and I awesome. think that's a big big thing that you have to focus on yeah if you agree with that can I get a whoop whoop Okay, because I think I think I think the interesting part for me, I, I okay. So you talked about the money thing. My team's eyes lit up. You <laughs> talked about being surrounded by smarter people. Their eyes lit up again. So I totally can agree with that. You know, surround yourself with way smarter people. <laughs> so um, let's let's get into your show and tell part and talk about niching down. Yeah. Um, niching for anybody else. I don't know how you say. I it just say real. niche. Yeah. I, let's just. I'm go. not a niche just, guy. I'm not in France. It? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so. <laughs> I love them. Okay, so let's get into this this importance of niching, bring this thing home. Yeah. But I'm I'm excited. So so that everybody knows. How many people in here have a, a specific niche or niche? Yeah. Um, so how many people have, have haven't done that yet? The rest of the, the rest of us haven't done that. We're kind of generalists, right? Um, so yeah, keep keep. Uh, maybe you want to change their mind a little bit. Yeah. I mean, so for me, um, you got to find an industry. You know, you don't want to sell to broke people. That's one of the big things. I mean, you're, some of you guys are in a market right now that they just don't have the money to give you. Uh, one of my best friends owns a, an agency and he's in a real tough market, really tough market. He's doing amazing things, but there's not much money there for them to you know, be part of that community. And so for us, it was important to find a community that we can, we can put the resources needed to go help that community out. And if you can't put the, re you know, it can't just be you. You gotta think about putting in you know, 100,000, 200,000, 300,000 dollars of monthly people on stuff to go help this industry. I mean, if you're not prepared to do that, you're probably not ready to n go down a niche, right? Uh, for us, uh, my last company built up to about 200 employees, so I'm comfortable going through scale and, and having you know, those, those different areas and pushing forward. And it's uncomfortable, and you're going to go through learning experiences, but you just got to understand that build, you build smart people around you, build mentorship. Like I have a ton of mentors I can call up in different areas, mm -hmm. and then just continue to, f to be who you are and focus on your vision and push towards it. But it starts by helping one community. So understand your avatar. You guys probably went through CVO and you understand avatar training, but have you done one yourself? Like, do you know who your avatar is? Like we know our avatar inside and out, and we even, I, I wish I had one on here, but we can go in and kind of show this general manager this, is in this spot, this is who we're trying to serve, and he kind of went to this school and, and did this. We understand who we're trying to serve and who we're not. Like I said, we know who we're not serving. And maybe we will later on in life after we make way more than we're at right now, but right now we have the team built to help this one part of the community. So there's 18,000 automotive dealers in the US, right? 
we only can help about 12,000 of them. So at 6,500, we're pretty penetrated into the market we're trying to serve. I know I'm not gonna get the other 6,000 of them and I don't care about them. So I'm not focused on that. So it's understanding that part first. Um, so what I, what I look on this is like find the niche you wanna go into, find the niche you love, but then really niche down more, right? Like so when you find auto, then inside auto, because there's independent dealers like buy here, pay here. I'm sure you've seen the corner store, you know, lots that, that that's a different ball game. There's 40,000 of those. So if I look at market size, I'm like, man, I should go after that. But I know they also don't have the money to pay us to where we need to help them. And they're only going to buy one or two products when this other market over here is completely confused in areas and they have a lot of money and they have a lot of product and they see a lot of consumers and there's a lot of need for our services. So I'm like, well, need product and service, connect them together, it's a pretty easy game. So um, the next part is really, you know, making sure you're prepared to build your family, right? I have an awesome family at home, and without them I wouldn't be able to do what I do at work, but build an awesome family at work, right? So I say we spend more time <laughs> working than we do with our family, hmm. but yet we rush hiring decisions and we put bad seeds on our team and we try to figure out who would be the best first type of employee. I never hire on job title. I hire on people first. If I meet someone that's awesome, I will figure out a place to put them and I will train them because if you have the passion to do what it is and you have the aptitude, I will figure out how to train you. I can train anybody to do anything. Skills are not the problem. It's the attitude and aptitude side of it mm. that I, I focus on. So if I could find an amazing person that's ready to take on the world, I want them on my team. We'll figure out how to do things together and th throughout the journey, we'll move you around if it's not the right fit. We're gonna get it wrong probably, but we wanna build a, f a great family. And so that includes me interviewing every single person on the first call, not the fifth call or the sixth call. I weed them out before my team even talks to them, right? Then making sure that they talk to the team Work, they're going to be working with these folks. Make sure the team is interviewing them and making sure they pick the people they want to work with. Because ultimately, you're going to shove them with someone else anyway. And then we, fo we, we focus on a pod concept. So we go into pods. We have a sales pod. We have a performance pod. We have a Facebook pod. We have a, uh, a, a development pod. And those teams have team leads on there. So you come into a smaller family even inside of our bigger family. So it's really making sure that people feel like they're there. And that's really another part where education comes in. People so many times don't want to train their employees because they're fearful that they're going to leave and go somewhere else. Well, I go, would you not train your two-year-old, your three-year-old, your four-year-old? They're your family. You want them to be the best they possibly can be. And you know what? If they leave me, I'm happy I trained someone else's future leader. That's awesome. That's a great pride thing for me to say that someone went on to do something awesome over there. And you're going to lose some people. That's going to happen. I've got, I, I have a lot of millennials in our business. This is their first job. They don't know what they don't know yet. They don't know how good they actually have it, right? So sometimes they need to go fly away and, and go from there. Um, and then, you know, for me, it's, it's the community. So the people in your local area, the people that your team is on, helping your team get back into the community as well and helping them connect with, you know, being part of the community. Because if you can hook them there, we, we have a lot of people that just want to leave Sarasota, and it's beautiful. We're the number one beach in the country, right? I've got a gentleman here I brought out with me right now because he's in, he just uh, uh, got out of his second startup, and he's like, Pete, I don't know, you know, I, we literally just met a couple weeks ago, right, in Sarasota, and I went to breakfast with him, and he was telling me that he wanted to do something in the AR space, and he was wanting to go into tech. I'm like, well, I'm going to Austin. If you want to fly out with me, I, I'll, I'll just get a second uh, bed in the room. You, you won't even have a, uh, an expense other than a flight. Just come hang out. See what it is. You come to these events with me. I'm going to Facebook for a few days, and now he's immersed, and he's probably going to move out to Austin. We're going to lose him. That stinks, right? <laughs> but this is an awesome Awesome town. And, and I'm like, well, just make sure we could do something together at some point, you know? <laughs> but build your community because I know it, that's going to come back tenfold, right? Even though it's not right now, hopefully he gives, he gives back in, in certain areas or maybe he comes out here and brings people back to Sarasota as well. So it's, it's always thinking about the bigger picture. It's not about you. We're just a little microcosm in this entire world. And the more you could focus on, you know, your whole community that's around you. Uh, the better off you are and like this is a this is an example of like focusing with team culture we do friday lunches together we all go out and not everybody makes it all the time i don't pay for it as a ceo of the company it's not something that i go out every once in a while I'll pick up the tab and it's a big thing for them because you know they get a free lunch but we go out and the whole team bonds and yeah what i'm giving up is a two-hour lunch instead of an hour lunch and time blocking them but what happens over that next hour is amazing right so focus on that and this is uh you know another area of like building your community we built a community inside facebook we built a community inside the, the auto 
market. And so we were recognized, we, we've had three case studies published by Facebook at this point, that no one else in our industry has, has that many case studies ever published by them, right? And it's not because we're doing, we're, we're doing some amazing things, but it's also because we built a community with Facebook and understand their community that they're trying to serve. So we're building on their platform the way they want to serve their community, so our goals are all aligned. And when everybody aligns goals to each other, then everything kind of comes around. And now the team is so happy, like they're like, there's nothing better than seeing Facebook put your stuff up on there. Right, girls? Like yesterday, we were, we were at this auto summit yesterday, and the whole screen, there was like 20 examples of our company, and no other agencies like being focused up there. That's pretty awesome, yeah. you know? And the whole, the whole industry, we weren't even known a year and a half ago, literally, not even known. So, um, pretty amazing. And this is our, our partner at Oracle here. Uh, he's the head guy at Oracle for um, data side of things. So, if you guys have heard, like, the partner categories in Facebook are getting removed. Well, he's the main guy that's getting removed right now, although it's, it is certain things are coming back. Can't get you too deep into there. And then this guy, this gentleman over here in the blue shirt is our Facebook uh, uh, partner manager over there. That's yesterday at the uh, Austin facility here in town. If you get a chance to go look at uh, Facebook, it's pretty amazing stuff that's on there. So be immersed into it. it when, you, when you take this on, don't partner with every single person. Find people that are going to help build your mission with you. right? And, and that's why I love what digital marketers do. And they want to help 10,000 businesses double their business by 2020 it's gonna help them along the way but they're focused on a bigger mission and when you're part of something bigger you can get people behind it and focus on that so I don't really have too much on here I just wanted to share a couple things that are on there but it, 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 if you really take it serious and you niche down and you believe in what you're doing and you're, and you're truly trying to help people and you and that'll that'll come out in your pricing model too you don't have to just charge 1500 bucks because someone else is charging it what is that market going to bear and what do you need to make as a whole and if you can make those two things work then figure out how to make other types of products and services that they can buy at the prices that they can afford and when you serve that market and because we all have facebook we all have google we all have all these different tools but serve that market in the way it needs to be served and and it'll reward you big time by by giving back um, and we're 100% inbound, by the way, guys. We don't do any outbound cold calling. We have one sales rep that closes deals for us, and we have uh, everything on an inbound structure, right? So we have, we have some teams in place. I'd be happy to share with you our, our, uh, our Lucid chart on kind of our framework on how our team structure is and how deals flow through and how we go acquire customers. If you guys want to dive deeper, I'd be happy to share more of that stuff with you. But, um, but you don't need a big team, guys. You really don't. And it's more about making sure that you're driving relevant um, content out and, and, and helping that community. And one thing I will tell you is the reason why we haven't adopted the digital marketer HQ training, right, in the way it is right now, is it doesn't have the word auto on it. And I'll tell you straight out, every market's this way. If it doesn't have their name of their business on the front of the training, it's not for them. So the more that you put the, the, the lingo they use, the titles they use, the, you know, in ours, it's called a dealer principal, right? Once you know he's a dealer principal, you would think it's a general manager or whatever. You have to understand the terminology. And then once you do, and you're inside of there, then they're like, oh, well, that's for me. It's the same tactics they're using, right? They're not going to change. It's just, this is how you do it in auto. And you have to show them an example of how an oil change special is a tripwire, right? For 998, that you can use that to get someone in the door and use your service lane to start that. So you don't have to just sell a $40,000 car. That's the tripwire. It's real simple. I don't need to give out anything else other than, a, uh, you know, find, find people in my market that have a vehicle I want to service and introduce them to my service lane. And then I have, a, I have the car on the, the lift for an hour. I can, if I really want to buy that car, I can have my used car manager do a walk around on it, do an inspection, make an offer to them, put them in a test drive vehicle. Right now I can get into the Excite phase because someone's going out driving around to go get Starbucks. I can give them a $20 gift card for Starbucks and get them back in our community. It's real, real simple. So anyway, like they're, they're very- Did anybody else is just like, you're sitting there, I'm just like laughing because I'm like, damn, that's ha probably happened to me. I don't know. That probably came from him. I was like, I, I would sit there in my little, my, like, my, my, gift, my gift car or whatever that I got, and I've just got my gift card. I'm over at Starbucks. I was like, this is the coolest. I mean, yeah, they so there, there's, there's so I, many things you can do. It's a but, genius. Yeah. But study auto. I'll tell you, study auto. It's been God. around for a long time. There, there's a lot of money in it, so they're learning really, really fast. So study how you're being hit with ads and what they're doing. Um, I use a tool in my, my Chrome extension, and it actually hides all everything on Facebook except for ads. I don't know if you've seen that that one. If you just type in Chrome, I can give you the Chrome extension. But you literally everyone's can, face is my face. Right you now. could learn. You could turn off every single you know one of your friends, and you can literally just see ads. And so the best way to find out how to how to <laughs> yeah, hack an industry find that. is literally is literally go to the if you're serving the chiropractic market, go to chiropractor sites and just visit all of them, and then turn that thing on, and then you'll get retargeted. Trust me. You'll see their whole playbook on stuff rolling out. Um, and so 
just that's the easiest way to kind of funnel hack someone else. And if you're following the click funnel stuff, I love that side of how he teaches uh, uh, of that. But that's the easiest thing um, to do is just get on there, put, turn that ad thing on, and then just watch the ads roll in, and then screenshot and look for social shares. I, I could show you a whole bunch of stuff around it, but um, it, okay, it's, so it's awesome. Hold on a minute. Um, <laughs> Sorry, man. I could go. For Jeez, <laughs> right? Um, if you're interested in having him come and do like a much longer training, would you watch it? Yeah, me too. I would too. Cool. Um, so we'll have to talk about that. The one thing I was going to say that I really love about where Praxio is going, which is a perfect segue into what we're doing next. We're going to take a quick break and we're going to come back and we're going to talk about Praxio. But um, being able to actually have people like Pete who have can go in and create custom content for their market. So like taking our, our, our teachings right now and be able to splice them into your front end and what you want to call it and all that good stuff is now possible within this platform we're about to show you, which I'm freaking excited about. Um, but gosh, if I can just continue to have more guests that make me feel stupid, I will. I know I'm doing something well. Thank you so much, yeah, man. I really so appreciate it. Thanks, Pete. Yeah. Thanks, all right, so we've got about a 10-minute break, and then we'll come right back. Thanks. Thanks, dude. That's yeah, so thanks. good. Yeah, that's appreciate awesome. it. Hi, I'm Marcus Murphy, and thank you for being a part of this community of marketers and agencies. Participating in this meeting of the minds tells me one thing, that you are dedicated to being on the cutting edge of all things marketing and growth. I'll be releasing a new episode every single week. So if you don't want to miss out on all this groundbreaking content we'll be publishing, click the subscribe button and you'll be notified every time we release an episode. And if you're an agency and you're interested in rapidly growing your business right now, click the link to our webinar below. If you're still here, you should seriously click it because that means you are truly devoted to learning how to grow your agency. So click that link below.